In this screencast, I'll describe the Joule Thompson expansion process and what the Joule Thompson coefficient is. The idea is we have a high pressure gas and we go through, in this case, a porous plug, something that causes the pressure to drop to low pressure. And in the process, typically what happens is we also lower the temperature. So this can be a gas at low temperature, or it can be a gas liquid mixture if the temperature is lowered enough to get into two phase region. The way we write the first law for Joule Thompson expansion is that delta H is equal to zero. We're assuming the process is fast enough that the rate of heat transfer is zero. There's no moving parts, so the shaft work is zero. And we're going to ignore velocity differences, so we're ignoring any differences in kinetic energy of the gas. Because it's a non-ideal gas, there will be this temperature change. And the Joule-Thompson coefficient is just the derivative of temperature with respect to pressure. This is a partial derivative, and this is that constant input. And this, it turns out, can be written as the temperature times the partial derivative of volume with respect to temperature at constant pressure minus the specific volume, the molar volume, divided by the heat capacity. And so this means we could use an equation of state to determine the Joule-Thompson coefficient. Now this can be greater than zero or it can be less than zero. What we're most interested in as we lower the pressure, we lower the temperature. But this depends on which pressure and which temperature regime the high pressure gas entering corresponds to. Then we'll do an example here of using Joule Thompson expansion to liquefy a gas and get a mixture of liquid and vapor. We have oxygen at minus 100 degrees C and 110 bar. It's going to undergo Joule Thompson expansion to a final pressure of 2 bar. The question is what is the temperature of the oxygen after this expansion? And if two phases are present, what fraction of the total is in the liquid phase? So we're going to use the Peng Robertson equation of state. Use a spreadsheet from the thermodynamics textbook by Elliot and Lyra that's available online, and details of how to use the spreadsheet are given in other screencasts. For oxygen, we have to look up the critical, the heat capacity values, pressure, temperature, and eccentric factor from the spreadsheet. And I put in the initial conditions you can see in yellow coming at 173 Kelvin, which is minus 100 degrees C, and 11 megapascals, which corresponds to 110 bar. And we see that the incoming enthalpy then is minus 7285, essentially. So this, of course, means that H2, the enthalpy leaving, is also minus 7285 joules per mole. We have expansion H1 and leaving H2. So we want to use now the same spreadsheet and put in the new pressure and try and determine the temperature. So here is the spreadsheet where we put in the pressure 2 bar or 2 tenths of a megapascal and I guess the temperature of 100. And now we're in the 3 solution region but the correct solution in the equation of state is the one with the lower fugacity. So the fugacity is lower here. That says we're in the vapor phase, and this is the enthalpy. Of course, that's higher than our value of minus 7,285. So that means we need to go to a lower temperature. So here's the Bang robinson equation of state for lower temperature, 95 Kelvin. Again, three solutions. The 
lower fugacity is the liquid phase in this case, and this number is much lower than our enthalpy, H2, that means we must be in the two-phase region at a temperature in between these two because we go from vapor at 100 to liquid at 95. And so what we can do, we can certainly use solver or it doesn't take very much trial and error. Here is the spreadsheet where I've adjusted the temperature such that the fugacity in the vapor phase is identical within four significant figures to the fugacity in the liquid phase. So this is the saturation temperature at this pressure for oxygen. And now we can read off enthalpy for the vapor phase, the enthalpy for the liquid phase, and we're in between these two so we can calculate the quality by saying H2, which is minus 7285 joules per mole, is equal to some fraction that's vapor, so this is quality, the fraction that's vapor, times the enthalpy of the vapor phase, and then the fraction remaining is liquid and the enthalpy of the liquid phase. So we don't know x, but we can substitute in the values from the equation of state spreadsheet for the vapor and liquid phase enthalpies. So I've made the substitution and done the math and calculate that the quality is 0.78, which means 78% is vapor and 22% is liquid. So we expand oxygen from high pressure higher temperature through a Joule-Thompson expansion, we convert some fraction, in this case 22% to liquid.